20 years later, Pripyat is still a ghost town. Accompanied by Igor Kostin, Yulia wanted to see the apartment where she lived with her family up until the fateful day of their evacuation. Contrary to what they'd been told, not a single inhabitant was ever able to come back to live in the deserted buildings. For Igor Kostin as well, the visit stirs up painful memories. He was fatally exposed to radiation during the seven months he spent covering the battle. Since then, he's had to be hospitalized for over two months each year. For the hundreds of thousands of atomic refugees, as for the hundreds of thousands of veterans from the Battle of Chernobyl, the fight against their invisible enemy hasn't let up. Everyone who went to Chernobyl is still suffering from the radioactivity their bodies absorbed. In the months following the accident, the liquidators flooded into hospitals all over the Soviet Union. Twenty years later, those who are still alive continue to frequent hospital number six. They're all victims of what specialists have since named the Chernobyl syndrome. We've all got a bunch of symptoms, heart, stomach, liver, kidneys, nervous system. Our whole bodies were radically upset by the metabolic changes caused by radiation and chemical exposure. When the liquidators went back home, they were exhausted, incapable of going back to normal life. Twenty years later, many of those who survived are disabled and unable to work and the authorities appear to be ignoring their plight by cutting down their welfare money. The veterans of the war in Afghanistan are still alive. While we are slowly wasting away, these men weren't even 30 when they were sent into Battle the Atom. Today the survivors are not yet 50 years old, but they struggle like senior citizens. According to the military, of the 500,000 Chernobyl liquidators, 20,000 have already died. 200,000 are officially disabled. You don't know how long you have to live, or what disease is going to kill you. You don't know what effects it will have on your children, if you have any. We know all that, and we know the invisible enemy is eating away inside of us like a worm. For us, the war continues, and little by little, we're slipping away from this world. Yet for two decades, only 59 deaths have been officially attributed to the Chernobyl disaster. Not a single study has been carried out of the 130,000 refugees from the zone. Not a single statistic on the state of the 500,000 liquidators. No figures on the population that continues to live around Chernobyl and in the contaminated areas. The real amount of radiation these people were exposed to has never been revealed to them. Yeah. 
A deputy of the Supreme Soviet discovered the systematic cover-up of the true consequences of Chernobyl when the Soviet Empire dissolved in 1991. Taking advantage of the anarchy in the country, she managed to get her hands on a copy of top-secret documents, 600 pages of a report to the Central Committee, written while the Battle of Chernobyl was still raging. When I read these documents, I discovered everything happened differently. I realized just how huge a lie the party leaders told. A decree number 12 stated that on the 12th of May 1986, 10,198 people had already been hospitalized, 345 showed signs of radio lesions. Yet at the same time, they were telling us everything was fine, that it was nothing serious and I realized the scope of the lies. According to Allah, another passage reveals that authorities had arbitrarily changed the standards. Multiplying by five what was considered the acceptable dose of radiation for the human body. When they raised the standard, suddenly people were miraculously cured. They were released from the hospital and sent home. It was criminal. The tendency to manipulate the numbers was not unique to the Soviets. In late August 1986, the first international conference assessing Chernobyl took place behind closed doors. It was presided over by Hans Blix. No journalists or outside observers were admitted into the amphitheater. The Russian delegation was led by Legasov, the man who'd been in charge of the governmental commission during the Battle of Chernobyl. When we put him in charge of preparing the report for the IAEA, we gave him the duty of reporting everything. He came up with a very detailed report that put everybody in a state of shock. Legasov spoke for three hours. His report concluded that in the decades to come, about 40,000 deaths from cancer caused by Chernobyl were to be expected. The Western world refused flat out to accept this estimate, which spurred a genuine East-West negotiation. These are theoretical calculations uh, based upon the Hiroshima model that you say that if you have uh, a certain radioactivity you know from Hiroshima that the long-term effect was so and so many would uh, would die from it and if you then increase it by tenfold you assume that it will be tenfold well that's the calculation um, this is not I think an exact this is not empiric there again the figures were surprisingly flexible. By the end of the conference, people were no longer talking about 40,000, but rather of 4,000 probable deaths. Nearly 20 years later, in September 2005, this figure became the official death toll of the disaster. The staunchest opponents to the Soviet's policy of transparency were the French, who went as far as to deny that the radioactive cloud passed over their country. Est-ce qu'on a constaté quelque chose au-dessus de la France? Non, parce que Les vents ne vont pas dans cette direction-là, les vents tournent dans le sens inverse des lignes du monde. Il n'y a pas lieu du tout de s'inquiéter, c'est sans aucun danger pour la santé publique. 20 years later, in France, and especially in Corsica, cases of thyroid cancer of the same nature and severity as those around Chernobyl are being reported. The most dangerous element that came out of the Chernobyl reactor wasn't cesium or plutonium, but lies. The lie of 86, that's what I call it. A lie that was propagated like the radioactivity throughout the whole country and the entire world. On the 27th of April 1988, the second anniversary of the disaster, Legasov, who'd worked so hard to unveil the entire truth, decided to put an end to his life. <laughs> 